Hi, I'm Victor Bassa, and welcome to the Be The Man series of Hit List. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to tie different types of ties for different occasions. Alright, so we'll start off with the all popular four in hand. I think this is what everybody learned back in, in grade school. Of course, it's, it's a more casual uh, uh, tie, it's a more casual knot that you can use with pretty much uh, almost all occasions but I tend to use it more for casual instances. So make sure you get a shirt. It doesn't have to be super ironed um, since you're going to be wearing a jacket over it anyway and I, I feel that if you wear an iron shirt and then your suit's all pressed it, it looks a bit stiff. So I don't know, relax on that but So make sure you get a shirt that fits your neck. If shirt doesn't fit your neck, that shirt doesn't fit you. Here. Pop the collar, and then make sure the thin end is on your left side. All right now, put your thinner end, probably like five inches above your navel, depending on your torso length. And then the fatter end on top of the thinner one. Keep it held with your left hand and make a loop with the fatter end and then from under keep everything held in place with your left hand and then adjusting try to make a triangle shape to get that dimple and depending on the fabric of your tie whether it's uh, microfiber or 100% silk will be the deciding factor if your dimple would be prominent or mild and adjust this so try not to pull too much so it doesn't look like it's it's wrinkled and that is how you tie a foreign hand I personally don't like to I uh, like to button these down just because it's my style so there this is my preferred knot for casual occasions one of my other favorites is the Shelby knot or the Pratt knot it's it actually reminds me of a half Windsor but the only difference is this end for example if you have a different color this one will be visible. So you put the tie on the reverse side up. Then again, adjusting. You pop the collar. Adjusting about five inches torso. And then the thin side will go on top. That's the main difference. And then the thicker side will go above it. And then you tie it down. Not too tight, because you don't want so much wrinkling. And then you loop over it, loop over the thinner part. And then you go under and right up the middle into the loop that you just made. And of course adjust. This is the crucial part so you get that triangle shape. There. You have it. That is the Shelby knot. As you can see it's a bit short but this is my these are my casual trousers so these are a bit low rise. If you were in a more regular rice trouser would be a perfect height. As you can see, the other part is visible. And that is your Shelby knot. Also for casual occasions. The next knot is the half Windsor. Um, it's used more. It's a thicker knot, 
so you can use it more with the uh, wider wider colors like the more spread colors which uh, the Italians are so fond of using okay so pop the color you'll be using a silk tie for this this one's from Jeeves and Hawks adjust this one's slightly longer because it's really meant for half Windsors or Windsors so now the half Windsor Right. So the thicker on top of the thinner one, and then you're gonna come up from the center. Keep it secured. And then you make a loop. It's very, very similar to the Shelby knot. You go under. into the loop that you just made. Since this is a silk knot, you can really see the dimple very prominent. And voila. That is the half windsor for thicker colors. And your jacket. Like so. The half Windsor knot suits the more wide or spread collars on shirts as it's a more substantial knot. It's a bit more formal so I paired it with a peak lapel uh, three roll two button suit. As you can see there's an extra button but you don't utilize that. So this is what I wear when I do a half Windsor. And the last time I'm going to show you is the Windsor. Others call it full Windsor, but it's a bit redundant since a Windsor is a Windsor is a Windsor. A Windsor knot is the most substantial knot. It's very thick, so it's best to have it with wider, the widest spread collars that you have. So just like a half Windsor, but there's another step. Secure that knot, then you go under, and then you make another knot on the other side, and then you make a loop over those two knots that you just secured. And you slide it right in the middle. This helps you retain the shape more, as you can see. It is a very substantial knot. So these are actually used for longer ties. See, I'm wearing a shorter tie, so it's kind of odd looking. But nevertheless, that is how you tie a Windsor, or as others call it, a full Windsor tie.